Bundy kill a local Thurston County College girl. A young 19-year-old Donna Gail Manson had told friends that she was going to go to the jazz concert at Evergreen College where she was working towards a degree in English. She was dressed in a red-orange and green-striped shirt, a fuzzy floor-length black overcoat, blue slacks, and or jeans. The only jewelry that she is believed to have been wearing was an oval-shaped brown agate ring and a watch. Donna was the only child of Marie and Lyle Manson. She was described as being shy and hesitant when opening up to people. She was about five feet tall and weighed roughly 100 pounds. She had brown hair and blue eyes. She also was known to have some difficulties with depression and anxiety. Her parents stated that she had truly overcome them, though, and she made good grades. On March 12, 1974, around 7 in the evening, she was last seen by her roommate. The roommate mentioned Donna stated that she was going to see a jazz concert on campus that night at the concert hall, only a 10-minute walk from her place. One other student stated they saw her by the campus library, but that story has not been corroborated. Six days later, Donna was reported missing. It was initially thought that she may have been hitchhiking since she didn't have a car and was known to travel to local surrounding towns, and everyone thought she may have just gone somewhere nearby and had not informed anybody. Detectives, however, felt that she probably did not leave on her own accord, however, because of the type of belongings left behind, such as cosmetics and other personal items. Roughly four years later, on August 29, 1978, two fishermen found what appeared to be a human skull while they were walking along the roadside. The location of the roadside was at the foothills of Mount Rainier. Police were contacted and they did a deep dive into the area and were able to find more human skeletal remains as well as some hair and a shirt. The shirt was rumored to be multicolored as well as the style that Donna was last seen wearing. The skull was then sent to the lab to get dental x-rays made to compare to records of missing person. Forensic dentists looked and compared dental records from seven out of eight missing persons cases, including Donna's case. They were able to compare only seven of them, and all of them were ruled out as a match. The last possible comparison left was that of Donna Gail Manson. It's difficult to think this, but the skull and the remains and the dental x-rays from the body found at the base of the Cascades went missing before they could be definitively matched or rejected as to them being Donna. It has been suspected that the remains could not be Donna, however, because when they reconstructed the remains were found to show the person to stand about five feet seven inches, an entire seven inches taller than Donna Manson. Ted Bundy comes into play with Donna's story in several ways. Reports had been placed that at the time that Donna went missing, there had been a man driving a beige or yellow Volkswagen bug around the Evergreen campus, the same type of description that matched Bundy's car. The photo on the left is with Ted Bundy, but he doesn't deserve to be featured on more media in this world, but had to mention it since it is connected to a Southwest Washington cold case. Another connection Donna and Ted Bundy had was that Donna told some of her friends that she had recently met a man on campus with a broken arm, a ploy that Bundy would use to get the help and the trust of his victims. Then Bundy, while on death row, confessed to kidnapping Donna from the Evergreen campus and murdering her. He never gave specifics on how she died or why he picked her, but just that he was responsible for her death. However, his story as to where her remains could be found kept changing. He first stated that her remains could be found in the mountains, with not giving anything specific. He then said that her remains were in the Cascades, and then he stated that her remains could be found on Taylor Mountain. Lastly, he then stated that he had taken Donna's skull and said he burnt her skull in the fireplace at his girlfriend's house without her knowing. There are some issues with this being what happened to her remains because in order to cremate, the temperature has to be at least 1400 to 1800 degrees and a fireplace usually will get to the hottest temperature of 1000 degrees. So Donna Gail Manson could have been the remains that were lost by the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. The backstory to finding out about that was after a story was published in the News Tribune that talked about how three unidentified skeletons had disappeared from the property room at the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. Let me repeat that. Three unidentified skeletons disappear from the property room. 
Apparently, what was found after the investigation was that two of three were destroyed in the late 1970s to early 1980s in the Tacoma landfill during purge of the property room. The one that could be checked to see if it could be Donna Gail Manson has not ever been found or ever had any type of explanation as to where it is at. Both the Pierce County Sheriff's Office and the Pierce County Medical Examiner's Office have been questioned and state they cannot say as to what happened to the x-rays from those remains and all other documents. Donna's parents were contacted in the late 1990s. They released a statement that they had long ago put their daughter's memory to rest and did not want to comment further. Will we ever know what happened to Donna Gail Manson? I think it is a possibility only if her remains have yet to be found, or if her remains were that of the mystery missing skeleton. If that was to be found, there is a glimmer with forensic genetic genealogy that it could be identified as Donna Gail Manson. May Donna's story never go silent until we do have some type of identification of her via DNA so that the case could at least have definitive answers and be able to only focus on the amazing person she was.